The next speech we have uh, is uh, Max Sipus, CTO and co-founder of Causal Lens, who will be discussing some very exciting breakthroughs we're seeing um, at Causal Lens on the synergies between large language models and causal AI. Welcome, Max. Thank you very much. Uh, th thank you very much for, uh, for the, the time today. And uh, thank you for the great conversations we've had all day. Uh, so today, I'd like to tell you about how, uh, how we think about the way in which large language models and, and causality interface. And uh, we'll also, in the, in the meantime, touch upon the academic work in this field as well, but we'll also give you our own way in which we, we think about this. So we'll talk about the, the synergies in, in, in a broad sense and, and you know, how to think about large language models, and then three very specific kind of integration points between large language models and cause, causal AI uh, around grounding large language models with, with causal AI, building large language models more effectively, and uh, using them to extract causal domain knowledge. Um, so, you know, uh, in, in the past few years, in the past, say, two years, there's been a, a huge onslaught of, of interesting research papers where people have have gotten quite excited about large language models and started to explore this question. And there is a, uh, so, so there's some, some great papers, and, and there is also this terrific comprehensive survey as well, which kind of gives a, a, a lovely kind of a tree of all of these interaction points. And what I like about this paper is that it gives these causal for LLMs and LLMs for causal kind of trees, right? So in other words, one is showing how causality can improve large language models and make them more, you know, better at reasoning, better at explainability, fairness, and so on. And the other is, is about how can we use large language models to improve the way in which we use, uh, in which we develop causal AI. So today I'd like to focus on, on sort of specific uh, uh, business use cases and, and ways in which we, we can really uh, you know, apply this synergy, right, to, to make uh, the life of our customers better, right? And so the way we think about it is, is like this. We, we think about the creation of, of causal models. So fundamentally, we care about the speed and productivity at which people go from data to, to decisions. And part of that process is creating causal models, creating causal graphs and things like that. So you can leverage large language models to make that creation process better and faster. And I'll talk a little bit about how to, to use large language models for domain knowledge extraction, or how to use agents to help you build models more quickly, select methods more quickly, write code for you, things like that. Once you've built all of these, call them causal artifacts, then you can also use large language models to help your users or your business users, or maybe your stakeholders, actually utilize those, those causal artifacts and understand them. And so we, you know, that, that's the consumption phase, and it's about getting trustworthy, causally backed decisions from large language models. So it's worth understanding a little bit large language models in a, in a more broader sense. So let's take a, a kind of an information retrieval perspective on this, okay? So, so think about large language models as, as having some knowledge, that's the, this bit on the left, the knowledge base, some method of, of extracting that knowledge from the knowledge base, that's the retrieval phase, and some and, and way in which they generate the answer, that's, that's the right, that, that's the generation there. So if you think about just, you know, plain kind of large language models, their knowledge base is, is essentially, you know, they're generally trained on the entirety of the internet. So their knowledge base is, in effect, a distillation of the internet, right? And I think that's very important because that implies that, you know, whatever information they retrieve from, from their knowledge base, it, it is essentially stuff that they kind of read on the internet, right? Not, for instance, our own questions about our own proprietary data or, or something like that, right? It's going to be you know, stuff from the internet. Um, and the way in which they retrieve this data is, is quite inscrutable, right? We don't know specific, precisely how, how they retrieve this data. And as a result, we, we know that LLMs have this, this interesting, exciting, emergent, kind of a quote, reasoning capability. But we do know also as a fact, 
and there's academic papers that talk about this, that this emergent reasoning capability of large language models is not fully uh, uh, developed, right? In, in specific terms, you know, large language models, you know, talk causality, but, but don't really understand causality fundamentally. And even after things where you um, fine tune large language models and try to really make them better at understanding uh, causality, they, they fail to, to fully com comprehend it and fail to generalize to, to new causality problems. So how do we improve really upon this situation? And so the answer is through, through firstly, uh, through this idea of grounding large language models with causality. So let me tell you a little bit about that first. So, so as we said, LLMs str struggle with this understanding. They also struggle with quantitative reasoning as well. And so we, we want to answer questions about how, you know, uh, we, we want to make large language models be able to answer complex questions such as, you know, that they're potentially counterfactual, that need counterfactual calculations or interventional kind of uh, calculations, right? For instance, this is an example of a question. And this is an, a problem that has been studied academically, and I'll tell you about the approach that we are taking to doing it. So our approach is the following. We want to have a, a number of causal artifacts. These could be causal graphs, causal models. Uh, ideally, you can imagine the, the, you know, a set of relevant causal models, all, um, uh, you know, existing in your, in, your, in your environment, in your organization, and you want to have them backing your, uh, your uh, agent that you're conversing with. Okay, so what you see here is, is a model, which is a, a rung three level model, so it's able, capable of generating interventions and counterfactuals, and you can add it to an agent and as, as a sort of an API call. And then from that point onwards, this agent is modified in a way to, to query this model and to ask it for, for questions. And it can ask these rung two and rung three questions. In other words, interventional questions as well as counterfactual questions. So from a developer experience perspective, we think about it as, look, you have an agent and you can add these causal models and you can have multiple of them and in that way, you have something that you can ask about questions you know, that, that kind of go across different models, right, in your organization. So for instance, and what, what is cool about that, if you remember, you know, th this, is, this is actually not inscrutable. This now actually provides ability to ground its statements in, in sort of citable information. So for instance, you can say, look, based on this causal graph, I, I have you know, calculated the parents of this variable, and I now understand what, what are the driving factors influencing this variable. Or moreover, I can have more complex questions where I'm actually now applying a, uh, uh, an intervention, right, and calculating some kind of a difference between different analyses and, and giving that answer to the, to the user. So this should help uh, uh, you know, democratize access to, to, under, to understanding of causal models to, to all, the, all the users in, 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 your, in your enterprise, right? So if we now go back to our information retrieval perspective, in effect, we've, we've replaced the knowledge base with, with, you know, from this distillation of the internet to, to something that's very specific, right? A set of causal artifacts that we control and we know exactly what we can put there. And the retrieval you know, the way it works right now is, is through this methodology of, of function or, or tool calling that is, that, that, you know, is, is, uh, is supported by, by many large language models. And what is cool about the generation is that it's not, that is, it is actually transparent for us. So we now get citations uh, that, 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 that we can actually verify ourselves. So we can trust the, the results that come out of the large language model. Um, and what we find, for instance, is that there, there are still struggles and difficulties, by the way. For instance, you will find that it is, it is, it is, it is hard to, for, for large language models still or to get them to fully appreciate the differences between, say, uh, intervention and a counterfactual. And depending on the size of the, the models or, or the eras of the, of, the, of the models, they, they are sometimes 
quite good at synthesizing things, but sometimes they may, might not be able to properly cite information, or they may hallucinate. So um, now let's change gears and talk about how do we accelerate the rate at which we build causal models. So here is how we think about it. We think about, you know, like I said, our objective is to go from data to decisions as quickly as we can. And so we, to this end, we build an agent that can get as its input modalities some kinds of questions and code. For instance, here is some code I'm writing to build a, uh, some kind of a, a you know, causal model. Can you help me with it, right? Moreover, I can pass that causal model into the, into the agent or say a causal graph or something like that, uh, and even some data, right? And that agent is aware of the kind of the, the work that I'm doing. And then it also, you know, leveraging all of our code, all of our documentation, all of our uh, worked out use cases, it has the ability to look over that code, over that data, and to produce some outputs, right? So it can write code for us, it can build new causal artifacts for us, uh, or it can even build user interface uh, for, for, say, business users. So you should be able to say, well, look, given the causal graph that I have and a model, can you please build me an application that lets say, a business user do certain uh, interventions on that data, do some scenarios, what if analyses, that kind of thing. And so here are some examples of how it looks like. Um, so for instance, you, know, you can ask it to, to create a causal graph of a certain form, you can ask it to create some kind of a transformer that normalizes the variables within that thing to create a, a structural causal model out of that. And what is very cool is that we have many, many worked out examples for this. We have a full code base that we, we feed into the, the agent essentially. Uh, and uh, that, that gives it a lot of ability to, to solve these problems full stack, right? So from, uh, from building a model to building a, an application for us, so that we can accelerate this journey. And here, you know, we, we, this, is, this is an active area of, of research, right? So we, we haven't figured it all out. And so we have a strategy to how, we, how, how to, to go about doing this. We build agents that begin in a kind of a specialized part of the product, right? Um, and then over time, we expect these, that they will become more capable and more complex and a single agent will be able to take you for, through the whole process. But to, to first order, we, we think about you know, more kind of like specific examples. You know, help me build a model, maybe that's one agent. Help me build an application, maybe that could be a, a separate agent, right? Because it uses potentially different techniques. And again, from an inter information retrieval perspective, how this works is that, well now, in addition to causal artifacts, we are now providing to our agent the entirety of our software packages, uh, the structure of them, uh, information about each class, each function, each method, all of that, as well as worked out use cases across many different industries that we have in our, in our product. And we use very, a variety of techniques here that I won't go into in detail, but you, you can feel free to ask questions. And we leverage the ability of of large language models to understand and write Python code and put things together. Finally, we also help users extract domain knowledge from, from using large language models. This is really valuable and it's, it's actually something that people have looked at qu quite a lot. So there are papers uh, that have looked at various algorithms to say use, use large language models to say discover causal graphs or to extract causal relationships potentially from text, from domain knowledge. Um, we, we try to do exactly the same in, in our product and to make it easier for, for our users to do it. So for instance, uh, we can you know, use, use large language models to extract domain knowledge from, uh, from text or from the knowledge of the uh, the, the, the large language model has from, from this distillation of the internet, right? You can ask it to, to propose latent variables in your graph, things that you maybe haven't thought of before, things, things like that. Um, the advantage of this is because we, we leverage domain knowledge in, in causal quite a lot, right? 
you know, causality uh, is, you know, causal discovery, for instance, is, is improved a great deal by, by using human domain knowledge. And what's really nice is that you can actually just say things like this. You can ask, for instance, a, a large language model, given a set of variables, a data set, you know, ex tell me some, some form of domain knowledge of, of for, for instance, how are, you know, which of these variables are exogenous, which of them I can't modify, and which ones I can potentially. So that's a form of a tier structure. So with kind of a one line of code, you can extract that sort of tier information, and then you can feed it into a, a quantitative causal discovery algorithm. So for instance, uh, FCI. And so with, with kind of like one, one click of a button, now you're running a well understood trustworthy algorithm, but you're leveraging this, this you know, domain knowledge that you extracted using the large language model. So again, back to our information retrieval perspective. The, here the knowledge base is, the, you know, again, the, the, this, the, this um, domain knowledge in the large language model, but it's, it could also be a collection of internal text documents, right? So there's a lot of causal knowledge we find, uh, uh, you know, embedded in organizations in text, right? And once you retrieve that knowledge, you can now create, uh, you know, this, this, you, you can extract this knowledge and, and like I said, use quantitative techniques to, to build causal graphs and structural causal models, which is really cool. So that, that concludes my talk. Th thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions. There were a few questions. Okay, great. <laughs> so it's good. Um, first one, how do you ensure your causal agent can't hallucinate? I'm sure that being based on causal model helps, but is there anything preventing it from making things up? Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you remember, there was this notion of citations that the agent provides, right? So when you get an output from this causal model, you, you can simply see this, the citation that you get out of it, and you can track it and, and see the code that went into it, the, the analysis that, that went behind that, 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 that point, right, that the LLM is making. So, so fundamentally, that, that's the way you do it. Yeah. And different question. Given that rags retrieve relevant context through similarity, generally distance, how is the appropriate causal artifact identified for the query, particularly in cases with many similar causal artifacts? That's a terrific question. Thanks for that. Um, I don't think that necessarily one needs to use se semantic similarity, right? I think the, the state of the art is to combine various techniques of identifying the relevant thing to, to query, right? So semantic similarity is, is a, you know, around these embeddings that, you know, so you're, you're looking for a for an artifact by looking for a, for a kind of a semantic embedding of, a, of maybe a sentence of text or something in a vector database, right? But that's not the only way you, 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 you can do it, right? You can provide a way for a user to provide some relevant keywords, for instance. You can do a keyword search or things like that. And so it's a combination of these that's, that's I think, state of the art. All right, I'm gonna go for one more that's on yeah. the top of the list here. How can we make sure that the knowledge distilled from the LLM is reliable because the outputs from LLM sometimes give nonsense outputs? Yeah, absolutely. So, th so this is why I think you want to, once again, ground this in some kind of a, a, you know, a documentation or, or, or something like that, right? So don't rely necessarily on fully this, this knowledge embedded within the, the large language model itself, but, but you know, ground it based on content of, of text. And then you can, once again, you can actually refer to, to relevant facts from the text that say support a certain causal hypothesis. So we're saying that X causes Y because we, we see that information in these documents, for instance, uh, in, your, in your database. Okay, thank you.